happy new one guys that's so why you go jump over every trap where they said for you this month in jesus name <laughs> this month started well because Kenneth Okonkwo, the Labour Party spokesman, don't gadget everything. You cannot drag a man into your own thing where you use your hand calls. Only you open man say you remove subsidy. Now your people the Allah and Peter Vifes talker, now Peter Vifes talker. Why you not wait to hear the way the man want to remove subsidy? You just hear say one remove something, you all go talk about. Now you don't cast. <laughs> And they got dragged with a beast. Like, oh, papa, papa, vow. Revelio. A bamba leke. O simile ke buke. Can they to concordo explain everything A to Z? 21 minutes video of a new life, a new month, a new everything. You know if you drag with a beast, I'll go. Now your own cross carrier. I don't want to talk too much. Obedient, like, comment. And share this video. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Aproko King. Watch the 21 minute video starting to end. You go clap for Labour Party. I've been there too much. <laughs> well, for more on all this, I'm joined now in the studio by the Nollywood star, lawyer, and spokesperson for the Labour Party's presidential campaign council, Kenneth Okonkwo. Great to see you, Kenneth. It's my pleasure being here again. I really, really you appreciate for your coming. Joining us. Really I appreciate, appreciate your coming in. You, you've been in court today. You've had a long day. Um, you've had meetings, but you made it. So we're, we're very appreciative. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by asking you whether you accept that Bola Tinubu is now constitutionally the president of Nigeria. <laughs> well, I accept that we are in court questioning the validity of that pronunciation and subject to the decision of the court i will take a clue on how to answer that your question right but let me ask you let me put it another way has there been a swivel towards bola tinubu in the labor party an acceptance of the fact that he is now president and that what needs to be done now pending the outcome of the legal challenges in court is for the labor party to become in the interim a constructive opposition party and perhaps come up with a new model for opposition in this country i mean shadow ministers etc like you have it in the uk i mean i think you would make a great shadow attorney general for example <laughs> i mean is, is that kind of thing possible or is the labor party too busy kind of tearing itself apart and wanting to tear other people apart well i want to tell you that we already have a very beautiful model which we placed before the nigerian people and which they accepted so we wouldn't need to have a new model. We have our model that we are going to implement at the appropriate time. You have seen the model which they promised you. They promised you renewed hope. But from the first day of inauguration, they gave you renewed hopelessness. So, but we promised Nigerians a new Nigeria that is free from the culture of impunity criminality, corruption, and illegality. And we are going to maintain our focus on that promise and at the appropriate time we will deliver. Well, let me, let me put it another way. Um, if, because obviously Mr. Tinubu is now the president of Nigeria, if he reaches out to P. Toby and the Labour Party, and we understand he has this canny ability to mobilize people to his side of the fence, what do you think ought to be the reaction of Mr. Toby and the Labour Party to such an overture? In law, you do not approbate and reprobate. You cannot be in court saying that this is an unconstitutional pronouncement that a man who did not win an election is pronounced the winner and begin to talk about an alliance. It is an unholy alliance because you cannot be preaching this way and trying to accept another thing this way. That's the classical definition of being a hypocrite. And we are not that in labor. 
So we are consistently maintaining our stand subject to the pronouncement of the court. In that regard, I wonder what you make of the messages that he's pushed out so far and the optics of that in his inaugural speech. Um, were you inspired by it or were you depressed <laughs> by it? Mm -hmm. I was a bit scandalized by it because a statement was made to be an inaugural speech. And right there in the speech, you could see a man contradicting the exact thing he was saying. Well, I may not blame him. The statement was written for him. But his own utterances, which was not even in the text, ran exactly contrary, and contrary to exact thing he was saying. Meaning, he was simply being a mouthpiece to somebody who wrote something. I said it during campaign that I am not moved by anything documented because that may just be the work of some brilliant professors. I want to hear the candidates talk. I want them to be cross-examined. Let's hear what he will say. Now, let me move into why I said this. A man in his speech said, we shall consult and dialogue and never dictate. And Piam, he issued the first dictate of his regime for a subsidy is gone well i don't mean to interrupt you but to because our job is to try and interpret things as accurately as possible Proceed. if you interpret that certainly the way that they are now explaining it they're saying that he made a reference to the fact that subsidy is gone but the reference was the fact that the previous government had only made allowance up till june in the budget it wasn't him who did it he was simply acknowledging that the subsidy is effectively gone would you concede that to him no i would not the statement he made was in may the subsidy was to go by june in politics one day is enough to do the miracle or the damage but what is the essence of you are saying in your inaugural speech that you are going to inflict more pain on the people. He said he was going to lead. Leadership is defined as the ability to influence people through inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. That was a demonstration of arrogance of power, not humility of purpose. Now, when you are a leader, what is your purpose? Is it to inflict more pains on the people? No. And you have to be humble about it especially when the problem emanated from the incompetence and dishonesty of leaders not from the complicity of the people now let me start by saying so that you do not misinterpret me as ever supporting anything about oil fuel subsidy if there is anything that irritates me to my bones is the issue of subsidy i wouldn't have voted for anybody who said he was going to maintain oil subsidy and i'm very serious about that what is the wisdom in, a, an, in an oil producing country paying more than seven point something trillion to foreign countries to refine your oil and send it back to you? You paying their shipping line, you building their refineries abroad when you have your four refineries already built. So you support his move then? No, listen to me. Right. I am saying that I hate everything about oil subsidy and I agree with anybody who says it's fraudulent, it's criminal and has no business in the first place in the Nigerian economy. Like I said. Well, that's why he removed it. No. We should be as careful in coming out of oil subsidy as we were careless in going into it. We displayed recklessness and carelessness going into it in the first place. So when you were coming out, you wouldn't be as careless mm. as you were going in. So what I'm saying is when you want to remove it, there are two fundamental bases. And I talk now as an economist that you must fulfill in order to make sure that you don't destroy the economy before building it post oil subsidy. And the two basic econometrics that you must achieve you must saturate the system 
with fuel and you must ensure there is no monopoly. When you saturate the system with fuel, elementary economics will teach you that when supply is excess, it maintains a cap on the price. However, no matter how supply is entrenched, if there is monopoly, the monopoly through Shylock mentality of making profit can still manipulate the supply in order to make sure that the price gets haywire. i give you an example with OPEC. OPEC can throw its weight around. Even when the supply is there and they don't like the price, they simply cut the supply and the price will jack up. That is what is happening in Nigeria. You should factor it in. Some people have been feeding big on that general corrupt tendency of oil subsidy manipulation to fill in their pocket. So when you want to deal with such things, you have to be careful coming out. You don't need to pronounce it. Like I said, why I said it's a demonstration of arrogance of power. It's just you just want to tell people that <laughs> as president, my word is law. Nothing else. Because the other regime has given you a leeway. What he said is unlawful. He said oil subsidy is gone. No. What he said is not true. He said there was no appropriation for what he knew in the budget for oil subsidy. No, there was. And it ought to end by June. If you end it today, that means the June allocation for oil subsidy will be died by some elements of criminal tendencies. Because they would have jacked up the price before exhausting the subsidy, which is already a matter of law which is already in the Appropriation Act. So there was everything wrong with that pronouncement. And it is anti-labor, it is anti-people, not because that I support oil subsidy, mm. but because of the recklessness with which they are managing the exit of the oil subsidy. Right. Well, the Labor Party did say during the campaign that it would end the subsidy regime. How well. would it have mitigated the risks? When you have 51 pipes projected into your official pipe, taking the oil, you have 51 entities that are already corrupt that is going to mitigate against you. Labor say, we are going to cut corruption 50% immediately will come in. We are going to increase the supply of the fuel, granting licenses to modular refineries. We are going to encourage Nigerians to participate freely in the product God has given to them free of charge. When we do that, and we would have done it within even a month, then we will take out oil subsidy, that irritation called oil subsidy. And let me tell you, there is already a model to that. Take the telecommunication industry as an example. When they came in, they did not encourage monopoly. NITEL was a monopoly organization, mm. just as this government is erroneously allowing NMPC to be the only monopolist, meaning they can do any racketeering they want. When they want to give the license, they made sure they give to more than one. A connect and MTN, if I can remember. And immediately, telecommunication had checks and balance. But even the two was not enough. You know what MTN said? MTN said they cannot go into second per second billion until 10 years. And they were charging 50 naira per second of call. Two years after that, they put in Glow. Glow started with second per second billing. And MTN found the technology that they couldn't find and immediately resorted to second to second billing. Today, despite all the halabalo going on in our environment economically, telecommunications price is still maintained and still stable. That is what would have happened to our oil. Some criminal leaders led us into oil subsidy that ought not to have been there. Dangote spent $19 billion to rebuild his refineries. And these people have spent more than that, and they could not repair their refineries. You can see the gap in criminality and corruption. That's what they would have taken out. And naturally, you wouldn't even need to talk about subsidy. 
oil price will become lower than it is. But technically, aren't we talking jumping the gun? Mm -hmm. Because yes, you, you may agree, and, and a number of people do, that perhaps he erred in the way that he said it. As he always but, does. But, but the fact remains that the subsidy is still there until yes. the end of June. Mm -hmm. The fact remains that Dangote's refinery is due to come on stream at about that time. And therefore, the gap that you're talking about, the NNPC has told us that there's more than enough supply to stay, um, to cover that period of if, if there's any sort of lull or gap or whatever. So technically speaking, I mean, this artificial scarcity is simply being done by people who run fuel stations and all the rest of it who are artificially jacking up their prices. I mean, there really is no reason for it, is there? And that is why, as a leader, you would have factored that in. That was what I told you about the monopolist and the inevitability of racketeering in a corrupt society. You, as a leader, would have factored it in and not make that unguarded statement. You should have known that would be the result. Right. Well, that statement has been made. Yes. What do you think should happen now? Retract it. <laughs> Go back. Say sorry. That was not what I meant. Yeah, but they've tried to explain it. You haven't you heard that a new price has already been issued? When you're still talking about uh, they are proceeding on the trajectory of their mistake because it's a demonstration of arrogance of power, I told you that. Mm. Not humility of purpose, which should be. A humble person will say, no, 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 no. It's already a matter of law. Right. We do not intend, and there was no way I meant that subsidies removed. It's already a matter of law. Mm. It must face its way through June. But you see, that arrogance will not make them to have respect enough for the Nigerian people to quench their suffering. And that's why I said, they don't inspire us. They intimidate and manipulate us. And that's not leadership. Okay. Well, let, let me move away from that because we're fast running out of time. I, I want to get your summary of the state of play in the courts at the moment, the legal challenges as far as um, those are concerned. Um, obviously, you're a lawyer, you were in court today, obviously yes. being circumspect given that the case is active and the fact that you're one of the lawyers representing Peter will be at the tribunal. So just give us a summary of where things are at the moment. Oh, well, you know, we commenced the pre-hearing session from mm. 8th of May, and by 30th of May, we commenced the actual hearing. The actual hearing commenced yesterday, where we produced fantastic witness, through which and through whom we tendered our evidence on the uh, drug trafficking offense of the second respondent, who is Bola Tinobu, then we tendered our evidence on the non-qualification of Bola Tinobu as a result of double nomination of Shetiba, which is there in black and white. As at 14th of August 2022, he held the Borono Central nomination candidacy of the senatorial election and the vice president I of thought Nigeria. the Supreme Court had already decided that. No. Question. Your thinking is absolutely wrong. The issue before the Supreme Court was an issue of pre-election matter. And when you say you don't have jurisdiction to entertain a matter because the party has no local standing, it means everything that is before the court, no matter mm -hmm. how articulate it is, it is, is dead. So, to my understanding as a lawyer, what the Supreme Court said was that PDP had no local standing to challenge the pre-election matter in mm -hmm. APC because it has to do with their primaries. That's why you use the word aspirant when you're talking about that. But let me talk about the obita. Maybe a judge may have made an obita. That's what we call it in law. His own opinion. Maybe saying something about writing to a party or something, you know. Excuse me. When you nominate a candidate, the nomination can only be valid when the list of candidates is published by INEC and released to the people. Then it's no longer a party thing. Is it not, I'm sorry to use the word, 
but I'm looking for a better word. Does it not disturb you for somebody to claim that may writing to a political party makes you to have withdrawn? No. Until it gets to INEC and INEC specifically strikes you out. In other words, you have withdrawn because we're talking about candidacy. We're not talking about your aspiring to power. So the evidence we produced is to the fact that in INEC, which is the only commission that organizes the election, as that the 14th of that month, he held double nomination. And no evidence for now has been tender to contradict that. So we are now in post-election matters. And you can distinguish it from the pre-election matters. We have the requisite local standing because he challenged us in the general election. And when we adduce our evidence and take away their evidence during cross-examination, you may just see that we have complied with the law. And I am talking as a party to the suit, subject to the pronouncement of the court. And on that extraordinary note, I want to say thank you very much indeed. Thank you. It's always a pleasure listening to you.